of your school. And I think as a community, we have to look at private schools to properly educate our black boys. There's no way we can leave them in public schools and charter schools and expect them to be the type of men we need them to be. The primary goal of public education is to socialize. The primary goal of education is to socialize. I always say that your son probably can't read, but he knows the Pledge of Allegiance. Can't write his name, but he knows the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, can't do math, but he knows who George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln was, although all three of them were anti-African presidents. So the purpose of public education is to socialize. And that is one of the biggest reasons why we have this great homosexual threat, because now, as a population control measure, they are socializing black children to be lesbian and homosexual as a strategy to reduce the birth rate in the black community. Homosexuality is not being pushed as a cultural revolution. Homosexuality is being pushed as black population control to convince an entire generation of black children to have sex with people of like gender. Why? Because if I can convince black boys to cohabitate with black boys, and if I can convince black girls to cohabitate with black girls, then what do I do to the black population rate, the birth rate? I cut it in half. Same thing with prison. The mass incarceration of black men, which is a function of miseducation, is being done to control the black population rate. When a black male is incarcerated, and when he is incarcerated during his prime years, from about 18 until 38, then what you are also doing is not only incarcerating him, but you are incarcerating the two babies that he would have had had he not been incarcerated. Oh. Everything that's done must be there viewed as a homosexual supremacy that's coming into the black community now. In fact, over the next 10 or 20 years, most black men in public office, most black men who are instructors on the collegiate level, most black men of influence and so-called power will be homosexual. The sister said it best, that the white man does not fear an effeminate black man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again. Yes, indeed. You're going to see the rule of homosexual supremacy in the black community. In other words, any black man of substance over the next 10 to 20 years must by necessity be a homosexual. If he's not, he will not be allowed to ascend within the power structure. Damn. Because the white man does not fear effeminate or homosexual black men because and for all intents and purposes the homosexual and effeminate black man is the white man's bitch excuse my french no, no, go ahead. so we have to understand that and that also means that also means that when we raise our boys we got to raise them as men and one thing we have to understand the reason why black women are mistreating the boys is because they are displacing the anger and rage and frustration that they have for the father onto the boy and so what happens is he becomes, okay, the object of ridicule. She doesn't even know she's doing it unconsciously. But when she looks at him, all she sees is the father who did her wrong. And unfortunately, by mistreating her son, guess what? She keeps the cycle. It perpetuates because now he begins to scorn black women by the way his mother treated him. Right. So the cycle continues. See, the problem with the black community is that we continue the same Failing cycles. Every time a new African baby is born, we have a chance to rewrite history. Every time a baby comes out. The problem is we don't raise the baby no differently than we was raised. So if I'm on drugs, now my son on drugs, my grandson on drugs. I'm a homosexual, my son's a homosexual, my great-grandson's a homosexual. Because it takes a lot of willpower and spiritual inclination to change what was done to us. And one of the reasons why black people continue to suffer the same sickness that we've been suffering since the end of slavery is because we are so interested in changing our environment, but we refuse to change ourselves. Every black man and woman has within them a small white man and a small white woman inside of you. We all have it by virtue of the conditioning. And in order for us to become African again, we have to exercise the demon of the enemy. Until we take the white man out of us, we'll never be free. You can take you out of slavery. But if you don't take the slave out of your consciousness, you will always be one. And that's why no matter how often we fight, no matter how often we struggle, we end up with the same malu. Because although we're fighting the outside, nobody's killing the white man inside. Damn. For that Thank system. you. As far as homosexuality goes, we have to understand that the movement to homosexualize black children, and particularly the males, began in 1972. 
The Rockefeller World Population Council, along with Planned Parenthood International, and yes, I'm talking about the same Planned Parenthood that was started by eugenicist Margaret Sanger to open up abortion clinics near the black community to reduce the black population. 85% of all Planned Parenthood abortion centers are located in satellite areas adjacent to the black community. In fact, it's been estimated that since the birth of Planned Parenthood in the 1900s, that black people have exterminated more than three million of their own children. When we hear these conversations about Hispanics taking over as the largest ethnic group, that's only because Hispanics tend not to kill their children as much as black people do. And the reason why we kill our children so often is because of the self-hate. But getting back to homosexuality, the Rockefeller World Population Council and Planned Parenthood decided that homosexuality must no longer be viewed as a mental disorder. Up until 1972, homosexuality was listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. That's the Bible of psychology and psychiatry. Everything we diagnose is in that book. And if you are a parent, you should have a copy of it. You can get it at any bookstore. It's a little silver book with blue letters, DSM-4, okay? And what they decided was that had to come out. Up until 1972, homosexuality was a mental disorder. At the American Psychiatric Convention in 72 or 73, the homosexuals were able to uh, infiltrate the movement and was able to encourage the psychiatrists to vote to remove homosexuality from the list. So homosexuality has only been normal in America for about 35 years. Once they decided that homosexuality would no longer be abnormal, it was then decided that it would be pushed into the black public schools to control our population. In fact, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, in 1974, look at the dates, 72, Rockefeller World Population Council and Planned Parenthood said we got to change things. 73, they take it out of the DSM. It's no longer abnormal behavior. 74, Henry Kissinger in a national security memorandum said that we should consider, we should consider homosexuality as a population control strategy in the black community. And that is right now, that's one of the reasons why President Obama's Secretary of Education from Chicago Arne Duncan is a supporter of homosexuality. In fact, the person who President Obama appointed as the safe schools and drug-free schools czar right now wants a mandatory kindergarten through 12th grade homosexual curriculum in every public school in America. Now, we know that homosexuality has roots in Greco-Roman philosophy and culture. Oh, Many man. of the Greek philosophers were homosexual. Many of the Roman philosophers were homosexual. Julius Caesar was homosexual. Napoleon was a homosexual. Most white psychologists teach that homosexuality is a natural adolescent male behavior, which is why I always encourage black parents, do not send your son to a white therapist or a black one unless you know their sexual orientation because many of our children are getting psychotherapy from homosexuals who are propagating the lifestyle. Homosexuality is being pushed to exterminate the community. They make the boys gay, they inject them with HIV, they inject it into our systems while they get while they're cohabitating, and that is why HIV is the number one killer of black women on the face of the earth. They're giving AIDS to the gay men, and we're giving it to our queens. Black population control. <sighs> Man. <laughs> Caller, go ahead, Caller. Hello? Go ahead. Yes, I, I have actually two, I have two comments. First, I want to say that I travel like to HBCUs every week. And I see so many gay students that it's just amazing to me. So I absolutely agree that what you're saying, we are seeing the results of that because I have never seen this many gay children, not just men, but women. Like, I'm 